What's up, everybody? Welcome to Disrupt You, episode 77. I'm Ryan Thogmart, and this is the Funeral Professions Only Marketing Web Show. Three great questions for you today. We're gonna to talk about how to be positive in a world full of toxicity. We're gonna to talk about what success looks like on Facebook, and then virtual holiday remembrance service. What do we do with that? All right, so first question, Ryan, we're having to do our holiday remembrance service virtual this year. How do we market this? Look, I'm excited about this opportunity for funeral homes. Uh, we've had this conversation with dozens of our clients really working through the semantics of having it online, but how do we promote it and what opportunities does it present? So this year, different than most years where you can pack in 300, 400 people into your chapel, we're gonna to have to do things virtual this year because of gathering restrictions and guidelines and things. So it's a valuable service that you offer families every year. And there's a lot of opportunity of how to make it bigger and better this year. So for example, we're working with one funeral home where they've decided to do a drive-through holiday remembrance service where cars are gonna drive through, they're gonna hand the ornaments, they're gonna have social distancing, they're gonna have carolers, they're gonna have a band, they're gonna have like all kinds of fun things. But here's the, here's the biggest opportunity that I see. Not only are you gonna be able to live stream this virtually through Facebook and through possibly your website, and you're gonna invite the families that you serve this year, but there's a huge opportunity for you to just invite the community. Yes, you're not gonna be getting an ornament or a candle or something like that to those families, However, you're giving them the opportunity in community when we need it more so now than ever to be able to come alongside other families who are experiencing the extreme loss that they're also experiencing. And you're gonna be able to influence other families that maybe you didn't serve. Maybe the funeral home that they went to in their community or the discount firm or the direct cremation company that they used didn't, isn't offering a holiday remembrance service and you're giving them the opportunity to be a part of yours. I think that is probably the most powerful thing that can come out of the opportunity to hold these remembrance services virtually. You're gonna be able to influence more people, you're gonna be able to impact more lives and more families and provide more healing. And I think overall that is going to be valuable. But from the marketing perspective, you gotta blitz this on social media hard. So the plan that we came up with one of our clients, and I won't go into every step of it, but the gist is this. You're gonna create a hero piece of video content. You're gonna create a piece of video content where you or somebody on your team is talking about the remembrance service at length. So maybe two and a half, three minutes. Then you're gonna break those down each week into small little snippets where you're gonna talk about the different parts of the holiday remembrance service and what you're going to do. And every time you talk about these, you're gonna have a registration link where families can go onto your website and you can, they can register to attend. The value of getting them to a register to attend, even though you don't need registration to watch something via Facebook Live, if you're gonna live stream it on Facebook, is that you're gonna be able to capture data from these families and you're gonna be able to market and engage with them later. You can offer aftercare follow-up. Even if you didn't serve that family, it's a great way for you to reach out and, and continue conversation and provide value. So social media's gotta be the forefront. Think big piece of content then think breaking it down into 15 to 20 second little snippets. Maybe it's walking around the funeral home and saying to each staff member, hey, why should someone attend our virtual holiday remembrance service? Boom, record it, there's a piece of content. Next person, why should somebody attend our holiday virtual remembrance service? Boom, now you got another piece of content. So just put content out like that each week leading up to it. Maybe there's a written form of content that you can put on a blog where then you can create a post or two about that for social media. And then maybe there's some old school things like um, if you have a good relationship with a writer at your newspaper, being able to get coverage on how you're adapting in this COVID reality, uh, providing a service that is insanely healing and powerful for families that you serve, but now you're making it available to everybody in the community. There's real opportunity. Let's not look at this as, oh, we can't have 300 people in our chapel. Though that's valuable, you can have 1,000 people, 2,000 people, 3,000 people online that can experience the power of your brand and the healing that comes along with using your funeral home or cemetery. 
Okay, segment two. This is a good one. This is our segment where we go hardcore on a social media question. Ryan, what do you consider successful for Facebook? Oh, wow. Uh, so this is kind of a loaded question because there's a lot of different ways to engage success. And success for Funeral Home A may be different than success for Funeral Home B. Maybe Funeral Home B has been engaging on social at scale for a while and they just need now to start driving leads. Maybe Funeral Home A hasn't engaged on Facebook before or they've had a very automated approach to social media. So what success looks like is just building engagement and awareness around specific things. So to determine success, one, you're gonna need to you know, write down some goals and, and have a strategy of how to achieve those goals. So you know, what does success look like for you? So let's use the example of um, we wanna drive more online leads. Let's define what a lead looks like. Okay, we wanna just capture email addresses through things that we do online for specific content. Great, let's create a campaign uh, with a, a do-it-yourself pre-planning guide that families can download. Are you getting leads? Boom, that campaign is successful when we get leads. But there's a lot of other ways to, to, to garner success. And we just put together a presentation for ICCFA that, was, that we're gonna be giving uh, where we look at good and bad social media. So good social media is, are you getting a return on investment? Are you putting money into the platform and getting money back out of it? or achieving the goals that you set out to achieve, which are going to equate to bigger business goals and be profitable for the funeral home. Are you getting engagement at scale? Meaning are you getting hundreds, if not thousands of people each month engaging with your content repetitively? And is the content specific to your funeral home? Is it organic and real to you? Because if it is and you're getting that engagement, now you're building a relationship and that builds trust and transparency. So that's another barometer of what success looks like. Also, are you engaging the right people? This is super key because we've had funeral homes come to us that are getting crazy amounts of engagement around just boosting a certain post for hundreds of dollars, but they're hitting people that live all over the United States, not in their zip code. They're not engaging the right people. That's not valuable. Are we engaging the right people or are you engaging the right people that are in that demographic, the most profitable for your funeral home that have a higher likelihood of being at need for themselves or a loved one, are you engaging the right people? And then finally, another barometer of success is what's the feedback? Are you going into the local grocery store or the post office or running errands and people coming up to you and saying, hey, we love what you're doing on social media. That was a great post. That was a really valuable post. That was really fun. Your content's so good. Are you getting that type of feedback? That's another barometer of success. And then you can get into sales and leads and setting you know, KPIs on the number of leads and the dollar amount of leads that you're trying to generate. All of that wraps into what makes social media successful. Social media is just not a lead driver. There's a lot of other values from the relationship component that comes in with doing social media correctly. All right, we're recording this. You're gonna see it probably a week later, but we're recording this during uh, the week of Thanksgiving and so it brought up this topic. This is probably my favorite s subject or favorite uh, segment of these episodes is when we get to talk about mindset and some personal development and just providing value into the world and being positive. So um, the question is, how do I show, how, do, how can my brand be positive in a world full of toxicity? And, and it's true, we're in this like very volatile, Everything is offensive. Um, it just, there's a lot of chaos. Chaos is the best word to use for kind of the world that we live in right now. And a lot of it's toxic. Um, if you sit and you watch the news, like that's toxic. Like it's going to be creating thought patterns that aren't positive, that are overly negative. It's going to warp your sense of reality. So we live in a very toxic environment. How do you remain positive? How does your brand or your funeral home stay positive? And I really think like it's super simple. Um, it's one, it's mindset, choosing joy. Joy is a choice. You wake up in the morning, you can choose to be joyful. You can choose to have things happen for you or happen to you. And when you go through your day and you look at the circumstances, there's, there's so many unknowns and things that you can't control, but you can control your mindset and you can control your joy because you don't let circumstances rip that joy from you. 
think of gratitude. We're in the week of Thanksgiving. Like we've challenged a lot of our clients and, and our brand internally for people to go, okay, what's a picture of something that gives you joy? What, what does joy mean to you and happiness? And really reflect on those things. You know, let's, let's, let's look at the time we're in. A lot of you probably didn't get to meet with family during Thanksgiving. Like you didn't get together in person. That can be really negative. Or we can look at the positive of, hey, we're protecting each other. We're gonna be around for another Thanksgiving. But I'm grateful for the technology that we have that we can still be present in a virtual setting versus having to risk health being together personally. So it's, it's really a conscious choice of whether your brand's gonna be positive. It doesn't mean that you're creating political statements. It doesn't mean that you're giving your opinion on, you know, things that are happening in the world and how they're not really that bad. It's not that, it's just showing gratitude. It's showing humanality and the way that you're blessing people. Are you doing a, a coat drive? Are you doing a book bag drive? Are you doing a food drive? Um, are you donating to a local pantry? Are you opening up your funeral home and giving out meals? Like there's a lot of different opportunities that are presented this year where you can put positivity back into the world by just being joyful positive and kind and that can absolutely alter the state of somebody else that sees that content you can be the positive message in your environment um, on a daily basis but that's a choice that you have to make and the mindset and the joy that you have is a conscious choice that you're going to choose to have and then you're going to choose to be able to give that positivity to someone else and at the end of the day, that could be more valuable than anything else that you do that day. Just giving somebody else that positive interaction and helping their mindset choose joy as well. All right, that wraps up episode 77 of Disrupt You. If you've got questions or topics that you want to discuss in this format, we've gotten a lot of great feedback from this format. It's kind of casual. This one, I'm back in the office for a day to shoot. I'm not roaming around the mountainside somewhere, unfortunately. But if you've got questions, they're gonna throw up a number. It's been up most of the episode. Uh, it's my text community. You can legit text that. It's gonna go right to my phone. And uh, this is a vibrant community. I get text messages daily. You can see message after message after message after message. So people are messaging and I am replying. So send your questions here, your thoughts, your complaints, your hate, your positivity, your joy. Actually, you know what? Here's what I want you to do. I want you to text me and text me how you're going to choose joy. What is it that you're gonna be thankful for each morning to help you choose joy? Text me that and let's have a conversation. Until next time, keep disrupting. Hot dang! Woo!